Thank you to Skillshare for supporting this episode of Journey to the Microcosmos. If you're one of the first thousand people to click the link in the description, you can get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. There's a lot of green in the world. And that is thanks, in no small part, to the microcosmos. Not only did cyanobacteria lay the foundation for an oxygenated Earth, they laid the foundation for chloroplasts when they were endosymbiotically consumed, helping their host take on their photosynthetic machinery. For most of us, the green we are confronted with every day is a more macroscopic kind, the leaves you see on trees and grass. And if you're on a hike, you might notice some squishy bundles of green flush against a tree or low to the ground. Oh, a moss, you might tell yourself. Or, oh, a lichen. And then, perhaps you move on, unsure of whether you've called it the right thing, but distracted by the many other sights around you. But today, we're not going to let that happen. We are going to linger on our non-vascular plant friends and look at them a little closer learning more about what they are and why only one of those things is actually a plant. It's the moss. Moss is the plant. More specifically, moss is a member of the plant division called bryophyta. And when we say that moss is a non-vascular plant, what we mean is that it doesn't have the vascular tissue, like a xylem and phloem, to transport water and nutrients around the plant. This lack of vasculature keeps mosses short so that they can still transport nutrients and water easily. And while they don't technically have roots or leaves as defined for vascular plants, you'll see the equivalent structures like their root-like filaments called rhizoids and also these leafy parts. And mosses provide a lot of benefits to the environment around them. They help prevent erosion, and they can provide insulation. And we've seen ourselves how mosses provide a home to some of our favorite microbial companions. Lichen, on the other hand, though they are sometimes called non-vascular plants, they are very definitely not plants. So what is lichen? In a 2010 Discovery article, the lichenologist Trevor Goward described lichen as, quote, fungi that have discovered agriculture. To be more specific, lichen is a symbiotic union between a fungus and an algae. The fungus provides access to nutrients as well as protection from the elements and UV light. And in exchange, the algae provides its own photosynthetic capabilities. Now that sounds straightforward enough, especially when you consider all the symbiotic relationships we've learned about in the microcosmos, put together the right fungus and the right algae, and you get a lichen, right? Well, scientists have attempted to create lichens in the lab by culturing the appropriate partners together, but with little success. And it turns out that that might be because we've underestimated the number of partners involved. In one study, scientists found that there was at least one other fungal partner in their lichens, and it could be that other species have many, many other members involved, making them far more complex than we have understood thus far. For something so strange and complicated, lichens are amazingly prevalent. They're estimated to cover up to around 6% of our planet's surface, whether that's on the side of a tree or on a rock, or even on dunes. And lichens have this ability to not only latch on to all sorts of surfaces, but to disrupt them and convert them into a more habitable environment by releasing minerals and creating the early ingredients for future soil. And so, because lichens are so important to cultivating these seemingly inhospitable parts of our world, many have thought lichens were possibly one of the first organisms to make it onto land. But research from 2019 has suggested that lichens didn't find their way to land until well after vascular plants did. In fact, it could be as long as 100 million years after, raising new questions about how plants and our own Earth evolved. 
Now, mosses are also a part of the story, as they were likely among the earliest plants to make it on the land, and their ancient spread may have played an important role in raising oxygen levels to where they are today, allowing the evolution of not just other plant life, but of more complex animal bodies as well. With that said, the trick with evolution is to know that creating a whole world is much more complicated than any one step would have you believe. Mosses and lichens carry their own world in their spreading masses, not fully invisible like the microcosmos, but often underfoot and easy to ignore. But maybe if you spot some on a walk, take a moment to look a little closer and to wonder what other secrets they might possibly hide. Thank you for coming on this journey with us as we explore the unseen world that surrounds us. And thank you again to Skillshare for supporting this video. After staring on all that moss, maybe you're thinking, you know, I could use more plants around the house. But you might also be worried that you don't have the green thumb necessary to keep those plants alive. Well, with classes like Happy House Plants, hosted by the botanist Chris Satch, Skillshare can make sure you have everything you need to pot and care for your plants so that they live long, healthy lives. That's right, Skillshare. You can learn Python, you can learn plants. This course can teach you how to troubleshoot for your plants as well as more specific skills like how to pot a cactus. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning, with so much to explore, real world projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads to distract you. And they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. A premium membership will give you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are right for you. And an annual subscription to Skillshare is less than $10 a month. And if you're one of the first thousand people to click the link in the description, you can get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. Everybody whose names are on the screen right now, they are our Patreon patrons. If you like what we do here and you'd like to join them, you can check out patreon.com slash journey to micro. If you want to see more from our master of microscopes, James Weiss, check out Jam and Germs on Instagram. And if you want to see more from us, there's always a subscribe button somewhere nearby.